got a Zara unboxing today. So it's a really big box. It's a really, really big box. Red Vanilla, Gourmand Addict, when I got the Minimal Collection Discovery Set, the Weekend Collection and the Nude Collection. Right, let's try these out. Hi hey guys. Um yeah, just ignore my hair. I did it yesterday and it was nice and sleek and flat and soft and then the humidity went up and it just went <laughs> So there we go. But we're going to start off today from with this Zara haul. We have a lot to get through so I'm just going to be going through really quickly. We've got red vanilla. So I have read so many good things about this but when I wanted to buy it um, at Christmas time it wasn't available but then it became available sometime in February for some reason. So here we go. Um, so according to the box it's supposed to have black currant, iris and vanilla. Okay so we're just going to try it here. And so I can keep track of the cards that I'm using. I'm just going to write RV on here. But yeah, it's a very cute little bottle. Very simple, nice and small. And it's the sort of thing that if I liked this fragrance, I could see myself carrying this in my handbag. Mm, very sweet on the bottle. So just going to... Ooh. Ooh, lovely berry blast. There's a bit of sharpness. I like it. I like it. So I'm definitely getting the black currant, the you know, the, the, the dark fruit. Very much so. You know, kind of like when you buy that Robinson's uh all forests, raspberry and all forests and black currant thing. Vimto, that's it. <laughs> I'm getting some Vimto. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some Vimto and there's some lovely muskiness beginning to come through. But this is definitely a winter fragrance. I would say it's sweet. It's sweet and musky, so definitely a winter fragrance. Um, so far, I can't say I'm picking out the iris. Maybe the iris comes out later on as a base note. But immediately the burst is the black currant and a little bit of the musk underneath. is quite clean and sweet. So yeah, I would say that this is a, a winter fragrance. It's not screaming to me at all that it might be a spring-summer fragrance. The experience that I've had with Zara fragrances is that they don't last very long on me. I'm lucky if four hours later I can still smell it, which, you know, if I have time to respray, then that's fine, but I normally don't have time to respray. I've got five kids doing homeschooling, having a blog and things like that. So... I, I tend to prefer for perfumes to be uh, longer lasting. But I do think that this is a little lovely one. But having said that, there are certain days that I'm not in the mood for something that's just going to carry me throughout the whole day. Sometimes I do want something that is light and doesn't last too long. So for the price that I'm paying for this, not too bad. So the next one that I have is a roller ball. Um, and it's called the Gourmand Addict. Now, when I did my first Sarah shop, I had hoped to get this, but again, it was sold out and then it just rocked up again in February. So I was like, I'm going to try it out uh, by getting the roller ball. It's nice and it's small. And if I don't like it, I haven't, you know, got a big 100 mil or a big 30 mil or anything like that. And if I like it, I can always go back and get it. And they're $4.99 here. So this has got peach, cassis and patchouli. Um, yeah, we're just going to dive straight into it. Oh, very sweet. 
it's like a really strong sweetness to it that's um i wonder if that's the peach note i'm not really too familiar with the peach note i'm just going to rub this a little bit on my skin here oh there we go now i got the peach uh -huh, yeah <laughs> i got the peach note there we go patchouli is coming through so it gives it that earthiness uh, to it as far as gumans go to say that it's got the name gumand in it i'm not feeling like ah, i want to eat this up it's all right it is all right yeah, that's not too bad actually not too bad uh for what it is for 4.99 uh, quite impressive so quite fresh quite floral but also quite sweet so you've got the fruit and the floraliness going on in there um what would i wear this with i can definitely see myself wearing this maybe in early spring when it's still a little bit cold but it's not like winter i'm not feeling like this is a winter uh, like a winter winter fragrance definitely when things are still a little bit cold but not wintry cold but spring i'm thinking that i could wear this in spring so the other thing that i have is the weekend collection discovery set and these are all eau de toilettes sorry i did forget to say that uh, this is an eau de toilette as well the gourmand addict and i think the red vanilla is the only one that is the oh no it's also an eau de toilette so it's not going to last very long because it's not a parfum but yeah, so this is the discovery set called the Weekend Collection, and it's made up of the Farm, Tuberose, uh, Twilight Mauve, and Pink Flambe. So I was looking at the perfumes. I couldn't make up my mind what I wanted to get. Uh, so I decided to get the discovery set so that I can also have the little samples for when we do get back around to traveling again. I will have some little samples to carry uh, with me. So we're going to start off with the Farm so that's this one see if i can find out what the notes are it's got peony vanilla and musk so a vanillic musky type let's go Ooh. Mm. it's warm it's very warm but like a light kind of warm not a raging fire kind of warm very very light though quite comforting <laughs> Got some on my face. Mm. I like it. I like it. It's got a similar sort of fish uh, feel to the red vanilla. So I'm kind of thinking that I could actually wear this even in winter as well. I feel like I could wear this right now because we're still in winter here in the UK. But yeah, not too bad. Not picking out the peony, but having said that, I have never been able to pick out peony. I have never been able to pick it up. It's one of my favorite flowers. I've got peony flowers in my garden. And July, when they bloom, is like a, you know, I love that time. But I can never pick out peony in any of the perfumes that I've come across that say they've got peony. So maybe I'm a nose make to that. But definitely the vanilla is there and the musk is there. The musk is more dominant than the vanilla, though. But yeah, it's very lightweight. It's very... Um, you know, I, I think it's it's very inoffensive. I don't think it's a fragrance that uh, is particularly overly noticeable. I think it's a, I think if somebody is coming in to hug you, they'll feel like, oh, you're so lovely. But it's not necessarily something that's going to announce your arrival when you walk into a room. So that's fun from the weekend collection. The next one is Twilight Mauve. And this one has got Magnolia, Apple, and Lily. Okay, so let's... Uh, yeah, we got just lily not lily of the valley so i'm expecting it to have a a heavy a heady smell uh, to it so let's try you out and because it's twilight i'm expecting it to be light okay it's very fresh very oh my gosh very fresh very um fabric softener fresh is what i'm thinking is what i'm immediately getting a little bit of the magnolia but it's very much reminding me of laundry room uh freshness uh to it similar to uh 
I guess nude by Rihanna is kind of maybe a, a better version of the freshness, but it's got that freshy ness to it. But yeah, uh, definitely probably more of a spring. I can see myself wearing this in spring or in summer. But yeah, I feel like I've smelled a fabric softener, a really nice luxury fabric softener that smells like this. So that was Twilight Mauve. Uh, so the third one is imaginatively named Tuberose, but it's got black currant, vanilla, and tuberose. So it's not just tuberose on its own. So when I got it, I first thought that, oh, it's just going to be pure tuberose. That would be a good opportunity to see, you know, get uh, just what tuberose smells like on its own unadulterated. But no, it's got black currant. So I'm expecting it to have a bit of a a mix of the Gourmand Addict because I think that that also had some blood current. So let's just try this out. I have to say that the atomizers on these little samples are really quite nice. They spray out very smoothly without any issues. Hmm. It's a comforting one. It's a very... Again, very light, but at least I'm not getting laundry room vibes from it. Fresh. There's a little bit of freshness coming through. And obviously the tuberose is in there, but it's not actually very strong. Didn't really get the black current, though. I didn't quite get the black current coming out in terms of... It's only very mildly sweet. It's not cloyingly sweet. Not like, say, the red vanilla was... But yeah, it's, it's, it's all right. I would try this in spring, definitely. Okay, so we have pink flambe now. We just got pear, violet, and praline. I like praline in perfumes so far. The perfumes that I've tried that had praline in them were quite nice. Although I have to remember that this is an auto toilet. It's not actually a perfume. So let's try you, pink flambe. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> see, this is me right here. Mmm, this smells delicious. It smells like it's from a cupcake factory. Or you're like in a donut factory. The praline is really popping through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this one. I like this one. It's sweet. It's, it's got a nice sweetness to it. And it's got the floraliness underneath it as well. Kind of smells like those Palma Violets as well. Like they've been crushed and added into there. But yeah, this is more my cup of tea. This this is the sort of fragrance that I tend to like. So yeah, pink flambe, quite like this. Would wear this in spring, would wear this in summer. Right, so the next one is the Minimal Collection Discovery Set. And this one has got <laughs> this one has got orchid, orchid intense gardenia and ruby berries. And this is supposed to be immersed in the universe of essences and aromas. We wanted to represent tones and notes that can go with all moods, looks and moments. Divided into seven collections, our fragrances act as another piece of clothing in our daily lives. A sensory journey beyond what can be seen. Okay, so let's see if you can deliver on that, Zara. Okay, we're going to start off with gardenia, which strangely enough doesn't actually have gardenia in it. It's orange blossom, coffee, and vanilla. Unlike a coffee note, I tried black opium um, the other week. It's got coffee. I absolutely loved it. I only had a teeny sample of it, but I'm a big fan of coffee um, in fragrances because I also like drinking coffee. So let's try out gardenia. Oh, wow. Do you know, this actually does remind me of black opium. It really does. It's definitely there. The coffee undertone is there mixed in with the vanilla. It's like a latte type thingy. An orange creamy latte. So sweet. Definitely something I could wear now. And I'll check on the... Well, I know that the Lodnevity isn't going to be that great on me because it's an Eau de Toilette and it's the Zara fragrances, but... You know what? It is a lot cheaper than the black opium, and I'm getting the same black opium vibes from it. But yeah, not too bad for gardenia, which actually doesn't have any gardenia in it. So the next one is orchid, and this one has got bergamot, orchid, and vanilla. 
Not sure what orchid smells like because there's like literally thousands of different types of orchids out there. So let's have a try. Mmm. It's bright. It's quite quite bright and uplifty. So for me, this is spring, uh, screaming spring. It does have fresh, uh, clean laundry vibe to it. Maybe that's what orchid smells like. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a. It's it's got like a really fresh, clean laundry. That's what I'm getting uh, from this. Hmm. So very clean. Very, very clean. I could definitely see this as also something that I would wear, say maybe if I'm going to the gym as well. I think that this would work really well for going to the gym. Oh, I miss going to the gym so much, so much. I used to love going to the gym. Hmm. Okay, some of the floral is beginning to come through now. But yeah, it's like a really clean that white floral. Fragrance not too bad. Okay, so there's also the Orchid Intense, um, which I just assume is the bergamot, vanilla, and orchid just as an intensified version because it doesn't actually list the notes on the website. To say it's an intense perfume, I don't think it smells quite as intense. So this one was the Orchid. I'm really struggling to see the difference between the two. <laughs> they are very similar, but I did notice that on the website, you can't actually buy the Orchid Intense as a separate bottle, but that's in the United Kingdom. Maybe it's different in other geographical locations, but kind of just smells uh, the same. Right, let's try the Ruby Berries, which is the last one of this minimal collection. Berries has got red fruits, peach, and vanilla. So, we're going to have to see what that smells like. Oh, <laughs> malfunctioning atomizer. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my days, this is like a fruit ball dessert. <laughs> like red fruits really popping out and punching out. I'm not getting any flowers at all. At all. Mm. This is like high summer, mid summer when all of the red fruit berries are ripening and they're overly ripe and there's wasps going around, you know, drinking them. That's what I'm getting. I love it. Absolutely love it. it smells very, very scrummy. And then you put in the vanilla that comes in there and it's just, it's like a, it's like a pudding, a dessert or something like that. Yeah, no, I like this. I like red berries. No, ruby. Ruby berries. Yeah, but to me, this is uh, screaming spring, summer. <laughs> yeah, like it. Uh, so that's the minimal collection. And I think out of all the four of them, the ruby berries is well, the one that really stuck out the most for me. I really like it. So this one is the nude collection, right? And it's got uh, things like uh, Deep Garden, Lightly Bloom, Nude Bouquet, Cashmere Rose. But it's got like these really interesting little sayings. So for Deep Garden, it says, I'm the first notes of spring. Uh, Lightly Bloom is, I'm delicious and tender. Nude Bouquet is, I'm fresh, cozy and vibrant. Cashmere Rose is, I'm soft and charming. Fields and Nightfall is, I am a known but mysterious place. <laughs> So I think that's really quite interesting because it gives you an idea of what scents they're trying to evoke from the fragrance. So uh, we're going to start off with a uh, Deep Garden. Okay, so Deep Garden, the notes are pear, tuberose, and tonka bean. And this is the one that says, and the first notes of spring. So we're expecting this to be nice and fresh and light and uplifting and luminescent, you know, all those lovely sort of things. Okay. And it is, it is a spring incarnate. Oh, I 
I love it. Love it. It's fruity. The tonka bean. You get the tonka bean coming through with the vanilla as well. Those are more dominant. I'm not really getting the pear that much. I don't think that the pear is as dominant as the tonka bean and the vanilla. But it's all very lightly, lightly, lightly. Think April showers, you know. I like this. I like this. And I also like the bottles. So the bottles have got like this uh, floral botanical look going. I'm a big fan of flowers. Hello. Gardening as well. Flowers everywhere. So I quite like this. And I think I would like the bottle. Definitely something that I would definitely consider uh, getting even for the price. Lightly well. Bloom is Lotus, Peony and Musk. And she says, I am delicious and tender. So let's have a look at you. So lotus, peony, and musk. I do have a lotus plant in a uh, lotus uh, pond lilies in my plant in my pond. So, but I've never stepped up close to them to see what they smell like. Oh, malfunctioning atomizer. <laughs> mm, very fresh. So this is the. Uh, I want to say the laundry room clean, you know. Mm -hmm. So clean, like a, a lot of the nude fragrances that have that clean vibrancy. This is what I'm getting um, from this. So very, it sort of reminds me very early on in December, I got a sample of a Marc Jacobs uh, Daisy. Oh, so fresh, I think. Or one of those, or Days. I don't know, it was one of the flanker, flanker, flankers. Kind of reminded of that. Yeah, so it's got spring. I mean, it's not kind of like, oh, like the other one, but yeah, it's all right. I can see the tenderness in it. It's, it is very understated. It would be a very comfortable one to wear, I think. Hmm, yeah, not my fruity floral, but it's okay. Okay, bouquet has got jasmine bergamot, honeysuckle, vanilla, and musk, I think. And it says I'm fresh, cozy, and vibrant. So let's have a look at you. So it's got nude in the word, so I have a pretty strong expectation of a clean scent. And yes, because I've noticed that a lot of things that are called nude, they've kind of like got this like clean uh, freshness to them. Hmm. Getting the honeysuckle, definitely. So honeysuckle has got like a light sweetiness to it. And there's nothing like during summer when you catch the honeysuckle in the breeze. I love that. That's one of the things that I really love about summer. Hmm. It's not too bad. It's not a very uh, sweet. Definitely it's got a strong white floral next to it. Out of the ones that I've tried so far, this is the one that smells the most mature to me. Hmm. Not too bad. Warrants a second try, definitely. I think that this would be suitable for warmer weather. Next we've got Cashmere Rose, which is Lotus, Peach and White Musk. Not musk, but white musk. And um, her little blurb is, I'm soft and charming. I kind of think that whenever they put rose in something, they just call it soft, you know. Okay, so let's try a uh, cashmere rose. So because it's, uh, it's got the word cashmere, I'm expecting something smooth. Let's see. <sighs> it's very sweet. It's quite sweet. And I think that the sweetness is probably what the peach is bringing to it. Musk, the white musk is definitely more dominant. Yeah, so it's quite musky and a little bit on the powdery side as well. Quite confusing because there actually isn't any rose note in the note profile. So why is it being called cashmere rose? Um, am I missing the plot? Probably. This smells to me a little bit more like an evening perfume. I'm not getting the sense that I would want to wear this during the day. 
And that's how I determine whether something is an evening, day, spring, summer. It's whether it makes me feel like that's what I want to be <laughs> in. <laughs> but yeah, it's actually not too bad. If not, definitely something I could wear in winter. Because I'm getting this nice warmth from the mask, from the white mask. I can't say I got any lotus at all. I can't say I can distinguish the peach. There is definitely some sweetness coming through mixed in with the mask. I quite like it. I quite like it. Do you know this is kind of like six degrees away from Reb Fleur, Rihanna's Reb Fleur. I feel like it's got that similar but sort of like an echo of an echo of an echo of an echo uh, of it. But yeah, it's not too bad. Quite like that. Cashmere Rose, definitely one of the top ones in this discovery set. Okay, so this one is Fields at Nightfall, and it's got Praline, Sandalwood, and Tonka Bean. That's the holy trinity for me. I love Praline. I love the creaminess of Sandalwood. And I like Tonka Bean. I do. And the blurb is, I'm a known, but a mysterious place. I have high expectations for this. Please, please be good. Please be good. Who's the goddess of perfumes? Who's the goddess? I need to look that up. Yeah. Please let this be good because it, it's got all of the notes that I really do like. Come on. Give it to me. Give it to me. So... Oh, gotcha. I really want to like this. I really do. <sighs> but it's not doing it. It's not doing it. What is wrong? Why? Why are you not working? Okay, the sandalwood is really strong. Um, right off the bat, the sandalwood is popping out. Not getting the praline that much. And the tonka bean is being flattened out by the sandalwood, which which is giving it more of a woody without the sweetness that I would expect to get from the praline. A little bit, a little bit like camphor, just a touch of the balsam. Ah, oh, what a disappointment. Ah, oh, well, I guess it just goes to show that sometimes the notes don't quite meet your expectations okay so out of this uh discovery set of the nude collection i really quite liked the cashmere rose and i liked the deep garden and those were really quite nice so that was a lot of fun i think that the discoveries are really good value considering it's five pounds and you're getting two mils of the sample so for me a two mil sample i can get at least a good nine wears out of it uh, but if you're an oversprayer then probably a little bit less i'm not yet at the point where i'm an oversprayer because <laughs> i'm still getting a little bit too precious about them but I think it's been so much fun doing the discovery sets. And I think that with Zara, it's definitely worth trying out the discovery sets because they're really great value. And the perfumes are, you know, they are affordable. They are not so expensive. And even though they don't stay as long and you have to kind of refresh them and all that, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like they feed the beast in me that wants to try new perfumes okay i just i have a beast and it wants to try new perfumes the zara perfumes are cheap they are not unpleasant the only thing is they don't last that long so it's okay it can feed the beast and i'm happy about that so that's my zara haul i'll definitely be getting some more zaras i've been looking at getting some summer perfumes for my son i bought him some zara winter perfumes i did a haul about that and he loves them and he's been wearing them but we kind of need to change it up as we're going towards spring and summer so that's it guys thank you so much for watching for coming along this discovery set journey with me with zara and i will be back again with another unboxing another review and just another random chat about perfumes from somebody else who loves perfumes and until i see you next time lovelies take care